Welcome, my name is Christopher and I'm a community manager here at Dynaudio. I will be your host today where we shoot our Ask the Expert session, which is with Otto. And we'll just jump right into it with the first question, which is from Udo Holzman and Otto. He has sent us an image on Facebook where we can see his uh, loudspeaker setup, and he asked you to uh, come with some comments to it. Yes, um, basically Udo's setup looks fine. Um, there's no reason to think that setup wouldn't work. He has the speakers placed uh, into the room, away from the walls. He has a good distance between the speakers. Okay. Uh, the distance is basically the same as the distance to the listening position, uh, which is optimal. And how would you determine which is the optimal listening distance? Um, basically, you form an equilateral triangle um, between the speakers and the listening position. So the distance between the speakers is the same as the distance from one speaker to the listening position. Okay. That is the theory. Yeah. And we also saw in the uh, in the picture that Udo, he uh, sent us, and he also mentioned it, that he has this bookshelf. Yes, he seems a bit worried about uh, the distance to the bookcases. Uh, but in reality, it's the diff distance to the back wall that's important. Okay. Um, the um, bookcases actually absorb a lot of sound and scatter the sound, and that's a good thing. You actually want that. So you shouldn't be worried about putting the speakers close to the bookcases. Okay. So it's about you know getting the distance right, don't worry about the, uh, the bookcases? Actually, uh, it's the distance to the back wall that's important. So what, he, he, what I like to do to determine which distance is the proper distance in that room, um, you can't have a, a set distance for this particular speaker. Uh, you have to determine it in the actual room. What you can do is put, push the speakers back very close to those bookcases, which would probably be wrong. Um, and then start moving them out uh, gradually and uh, for each uh, step try to listen to it again try to hear a difference is, uh, is the sound improving um, so long as it's improving just keep uh, increasing the distance at some point the distance will be too far um, and the sound will be worse okay. uh, you'll start hearing um, a worse sound stage, yeah, you will hear then it's about too little bass. Yep, then you go back a little bit uh, until you have the proper distance to the wall. Okay. Um, another thing that I saw in um, in Udo's picture was that he hasn't towed his speakers in. Uh, would you recommend that, or um, we usually recommend a little bit of towing, but that can be different uh, from each room. So basically, the answer is the same. Um, you can when, when you have to set it up, it's the same answer as. Trying, yeah, try, trying, try to to work out how it actually works in your room. Trust your own ears. Um, try to uh, point the speakers uh, too far out, which yeah. will uh, definitely be wrong, and then gradually uh, tow them in until uh, you get to the point where the sound no longer improves, mm. start getting worse, uh, and find the right tow in for that particular room. Uh, that's exactly the same procedure, um, and again, uh, you just have to listen to the difference. And what are we listening f listening for? Is it a sound stage? Is it too much bass? Or it's a um, you can basically focus on um, uh, the sound stage, especially when you are turning the speakers in. Okay. Uh, you try to listen to uh, you want a, a wide sound stage. Um, if you go too far in, you uh, start collapsing the sound stage. Okay, um, so that's it. Yes, that's it. Thank you for the question, Udo, and uh, we'll move to the next one in a minute. So, uh, uh, our next question is from Trond Roas, and I'm sorry, Trond, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. And he asks what kind of reference music you would uh, suggest for speaker placement and towing in. Yes, well, actually, um, for the placement of the speakers in relation to the back wall and the side wall, um, the most important thing is uh, to get an even bass response. Okay. So I would look for tracks that has uh, a defined uh, repetitive bass track. Uh, that could be, I like Billie Jean for uh, Mark Jackson, um, Tracy Chapman uh, has a lot of records that's uh, usable here. Okay. Try to listen for getting the bass even so that no notes actually stand out from the others. Okay, so speaker placement, Billie Jean or Tracy Chapman? Could be, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, and I know that Trond, he actually suggested uh, a track called Amused to Death. What are your thoughts about that? Yes, that's a, a really good suggestion by Trond, because um, I use that track uh, a lot, that album a lot. Um, it has uh, a special technique called Q-Sound, that is uh, artificial surround uh, from two speakers. So basically, even though you only have two speakers, you will hear sound all around you if okay. the speakers are set up properly. That's especially useful for towing in the speakers. When everything is set up properly, you will hear some effects behind you, um, and they're more defined when you have the, the proper setup of the speakers. Cool. Thank you, Trent. So just to sum up, uh, Billy Jean and Tracy Chapman for speaker placement, and uh, Trent's suggestion, Amused to Death, is really good for towing in. Sure. Thank you. The next question, Otto. It's from Thomas Eriksson, and he asks, how would you define the soundstage? That's a really good question, because uh, getting the soundstage right is a very important uh, part of uh, hi-fi, and also, also a very difficult part of it, actually. Okay. Um, the soundstage relates to kind of the illusion of sound that uh, emerges around the speakers. Um, it's easy to get uh, a clean sound yeah. coming from the speakers, what you actually want is to have the sound emerging around the speakers. Yeah, so you can act n nearly close your eyes and imagine where yes. different musicians you, were. You want the illusion to to have the speakers, uh, the the, uh, the musicians in front of you. Okay. Um, sometimes you can have uh, depth in your sound stage if you can hear that the drummer is behind the uh, singer, for instance. Uh, you would define that as a better sound stage. Okay. Um, also. Um, very often people search for a very large sound state, so they want a really huge sound state. Yeah. That's not always a good thing, uh, because you can actually sometimes have a sound where you have this wall of sound uh, that makes the sound appear huge. Yeah. Um, but then if, if the sound of the singer is also uh, spread out all across the wall, then you won't have a very defined sound state. Okay, so you can... So Again, if you close your eyes, you wouldn't be able to actually position her or him. No, she would sound like she was uh, 10 feet tall and, okay. and yelling at you. Instead of having the singer uh, placed in the right position, having the other parts of the instrument uh, placed differently in the sound state. So the ability to, to have this illusion of, um, uh, of sound in your living room where you can place each part of the music uh, independently. Okay. That would define a good sound stage. Okay, great. Um, Tom Erickson also asked um, how you would uh, how you would set up a subwoofer in a stereo system. Yes, um, very often it's um, people get the impression that subwoofers are not really really good for stereo setups, um, and I think much of that relates to wrong setup. Okay. Um, so. Um, Mostly, uh, one of the things I really recommend is instead of using one subwoofer, using two subwoofers. And um, why is that? There's, uh, there's several reasons for it, but the most important one is actually um, people think that you use two subwoofers to get more output, to get more bass. But that's not actually the case. Um, what we want to do is even out the bass. So um, if you have a subwoofer in one corner, yeah. um, the bass will kind of fluctuate in the room, so in certain positions in the room you'll have more bass, and in other positions you'll have less bass. If you have two subwoofers, they will work together um, and even out the bass, so okay. where you have uh, a peak in, from one subwoofer, you might have a dip from the other subwoofer, and the total uh, amount of bass will be more even. Uh, so you, you get actually often less bass total, but it's, it's much more even, much more defined bass. Okay, great. So Otto, we have uh, three fairly quick questions for you now. Uh, the first one is from um, Arne Klein, and Arne, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your uh, name correctly. And he has a problem uh, as he can only place his speakers up against a large uh, window section. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, well that's always a problem because uh, you have the speakers up against a very reflective surface uh, and the sound coming off of that reflective surface will interfere with the sound coming from the speakers. Okay. Um, so the only real suggestion is to put a curtain uh, in front of those windows so that the speakers are against a more damped uh, surface. 
then the sound from the speakers will sound much more defined. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Neil Copland, and this is a funny one. Uh, he asks, how do I keep my mother-in-law uh, from moving my speakers around when she is cleaning up? Well, uh, actually, uh, I think it was John Room uh, yeah. that came up with the exactly correct suggestion here. Uh, barbed wire. Barbed wire. Yes, folks, barbed wire. Um, and the last of these three quick questions, Otto, is uh, from uh, Humbert Sin. And Humbert, again, I'm sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing these names correctly. He has uh, his speaker set up in a corner, which means that one speaker is up against the wall, and the other is um, free from any uh, surfaces. Yes. And he says that a triangular position isn't possible. Yes, this is a very common problem. Um, what happens is that you have one um, speaker next to a reflective surface and the other one doesn't have any surface, it's just uh, emitting into the room. So what you really need to do is uh, get some acoustic dampening on that wall uh, next to the speaker. That's the only good solution to this, so that you damp that reflection, okay. uh, so that you won't have any reflection of from either speaker, they will sound more similar. Okay, perfect. So, quick sum up. Curtains for on Klein, barbed wire for Will Copland, and some dampening material for uh, Humbert uh, Sen. The next question is from Ted. Uh, Sanborn, and he has a system where he uh, he turns off Odyssey for an optimal sound, and he asks, is that actually optimal to turn it off? Yes, well, uh, it can be. Um, Odyssey is an automatic uh, room correction software that measures the sound coming from the speakers in the room, and then tries to correct the sound going into the speakers. Okay. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, what you basically should do is try to set it up manually. Um, it's free to try, uh, and it's not actually that complicated. Uh, and then try to compare what you get uh, instead of trusting the software too much. Try to also trust your ears. Uh, set up the speakers like you would if you didn't have the uh, yeah. correction software, uh, and see where it goes. Yeah, so fine. it's about you know just trying. Yes. Uh, he also mentioned uh, to something about full range sound. Yes. Um, well, he, he says he turns Odyssey off to get a full range sound. That isn't necessarily uh, combined. Uh, you can set the speakers up whichever way you want without uh, the correction software. So you could manually set up the speakers to go full range or you can set them up uh, to have a crossover at, for instance, 80 hertz, uh, so that the lower frequencies goes to the subwoofer. Yeah. And the best choice is actually dependent on the system. Um, very often you'll get uh, higher output, higher dynamics by crossing the speakers uh, and sending the lower notes to the subwoofers. Okay. In some setups with large speakers, you may want to run full range on the speakers. Again, trust your ears. Okay. Thank you for the question, Ted. Our last question is from Anas Blikert-Rafsko, and he has this um, this uh, large living room with sloping walls, Otto. Uh, he uses um, some acoustical plates called uh, Trolltekt, but he feels like he, he misses uh, some bass in his system. Yes, um, an, an attic like that with uh, sloped walls, that, that's a, a very difficult setting to, to achieve a good sound in. Um, so it's uh, that's probably not an easy solution uh, no. to this. Um, the, the way the sound behaves in uh, a room uh, formed like that can be very unpredictable. Um, but my main suggestion is to try to work with actually the listening position. Instead of moving the speakers around, try to experiment with the listening position. Maybe try to sit closer to the speakers. Maybe actually get the speakers closer together and move closer to them uh, to form this triangle we talked about. Um, but but uh, yeah, moving the uh, the position either closer to the speaker or further away that will change the way um, uh, the the sound is is projected in the room, yeah. uh, and that could change the perception. But I know you also talked about uh, something with the bass actually 
being uh, absent in a special place? Yes, well, if, uh, especially if you're sitting in the middle of the room, um, you will have a, a face out of, of base. You will often have a, a kind of hole in, in okay. the exact middle of the room. So we should try to avoid sitting in the exact middle. Okay. Uh, try and that's to why you should, you should move and yeah, experiment the, with the, the listening position. The best position is actually uh, a bit more than a third away Uh, a third of the uh, size away from one of the walls, either the back walls or the front walls, 38% if you want to be exact. Okay. So measure the distance, find the 38% spot, and, and that is very often the best listening position. There it is. Thank you for the question, Anas. And thank you also for being part of this. This was uh, really good. Great questions from all of you guys. Thank you for them. And thank you for your answers. They were really good, I think. If you have any more questions for us, find us on Facebook. We will do our very best to answer all of them. See you around.